What's happening people? Welcome back to the Sanzan channel. My name is La and today we're going to look at this uh, rolling bass for, for melodic techno and then I have a sustained bass as well. So in this little project I have uh, two, two types of basses. So I'll just show you and then uh, we'll dive into the sound design. So yeah, I wanted to show the entirety of that so you could hear the uh, the different notes that are being played and why I've chosen two basses in this track. A lot of the time people will just use, say, like one sustained bass that comes in on the drop and then that's it. I've been doing this quite a lot in my, in my uh, projects and I really like the result w when doing it. So uh, what I tend to do is have a bit of a stabby bass at the start, a bit more relaxed and something that's kind of just setting the mode or the mood of the of the track. And then when it comes into the drop, having that big, warm, sustained bass that we have here. So let's look at the uh, rolling bass at the beginning. So the MIDI is taken from the um, Circle Volume 2 pack, the Melodic Techno pack through PML. And all that's going on is we're just playing the F and then we're going up uh, an octave to the F above. And then there's a little velocity changes in there, which is helping with the groove. So if you do these velocity changes within your MIDI, then you need the synth to react to that, which is what we have going on within the synth. So if we take a look here, let's make this a little bit bigger. Very, very simple sound. Um, and it usually needs to be for, for a bass, you don't really want it to be overly complicated. So all that we have going on is we have a kind of sawtooth, it's this, this sawtooth down here, so it's kind of like the quantized one. Uh, I'm not sure what this one's called, but yeah, it's this one here, so the uh, third one down. And then we have a uh, pulse width, which is on the second one down, so this is off and these are off. So yeah, that's what's giving it the tone, so let's have a little listen. Take away the sawtooth. It's adding a lot more harmonics and then with the square. It's really helping with the body of the of the sound. And so we have the both of these because we're on just the one DCO. So we're, we're blending the two um, waveforms together and you can actually include a, a sub if you wanted to. We were just using the two and they are both being pitched to the same octave. So it's down on this 32. So that's why it's nice and deep. Otherwise, it would be up here. And there we go, that's how we got that really nice tone. Cool, so what we've got going on with the filter section is we have a bit of key tracking which is attached to the cutoff filter. So the cutoff filter is actually closed down quite a bit so we're not letting in a lot of the sound. Or not letting out a lot of the sound. Like that, right? And instead of uh, the filter just staying open, we're having key tracking doing that for us. So that means that key tracking is just tracking the keys on the keyboard. And as we work up to this F, so we're going from the bottom F or the F2, and then we go up to F3, which is the octave above, that's going to open the cutoff filter, which is a great little modulation that you can do. So that's with this one here. So you just go to key follow, and I'll show you what it's like with it off and on. So it's exaggerating that that note, that, that upper note, which is really nice. Um, the envelopes themselves, they are quite closed down. So there's not a lot of sustain. It's just a very plucky shape. So a very quick attack, low decay, no sustain, very little release. And then the velocity is very, very high on this. So it's at 100%, which means that envelope one, the amp envelope, is 100% um, affecting being affected by velocity so when we do different velocity changes as you saw in the midi it's going to affect the the midi otherwise it'll be consistently the same so you, you notice without this key tracking and without the velocity you lose a lot of the groove put that back on 
It's really, really important for the groove, especially if you're doing stuff with the MIDI. Uh, other than that, that's it. We just have the, the sound in mono. And anyway, there's a little bit of delay, which is adding this nice bit of stereo information, but it's a very, very low amount. The side volume is very low, but you can see it on the mid side EQ that it is present. So if we have a look here, this is a side EQ or mid side EQ. And I'm looking at the side information and you can see there's some side information here. And what I did with the processing is I just cut away to this point here. So we're not getting any subby rumble in that side information. Cool. So other than that, that is pretty much it for the rolling bass. So let's move on to the sustained bass. Hi. This video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sample packs. Also check our ready-to-use and club-tested Diva presets. You can browse by the genre and style you are looking for, or get the incredible deal with the full Diva preset button. Thank you for listening, and now let's get back to your tutorial. So the sound is the preset called Capsule in the Diva Melodic Techno Volume 2 pack, uh, or sorry, the Circle Volume 2 pack. And the way that the sound is working, so it's not too complex. We only have well, two oscillators that are being used. Uh, this sync is actually not uh, being used because this is syncing to the second oscillator, which is not being used. But uh, what we have is this first one, which is just a sawtooth, and then the second oscillator, which is also a sawtooth, but it's pitched quite low down. So this is actually adding quite a bit of this like low rumble to the to the bass and adding quite a bit of like I guess dirt to the sound. And I, I was reluctant to leaving it on, but it actually does add this nice bit of body. So let me just uh, solo it. So it, like if you just listen to this bottom octave uh, or bottom oscillator on your on its own, you know that would not you wouldn't be able to use that for your bass. It would be too low. But with the supporting like mid layer, yeah, it makes for a very meaty bass, which is uh, which is very nice. There's a bit of feedback here, and there's also this LFO uh, two which is on, which I actually did take off because it was clashing with the lead melody. But this is how the preset originally comes with this um, LFO two on here. The other thing that's going on with the filter here is we have the cutoff, which is quite low down, and then it's being opened up with envelope two, which is this kind of soft attack, a medium decay and a, and a medium sustain. So it's just giving the kind of like a gradual opening. Let me just show you what it sounds like. So that's with just the cutoff filter and these settings here, so a sustained sound, and then with the envelope open. So it's kind of, it sounds a little bit like lag which is like uh, this one here. We put a lag on. This will be like the Diva preset or Diva init patch. That gradual feeling. So you could use that. It's very nice. But we'll put it back to where it was. Has a little bit more attack this way. Cool. And yeah, the LFO2 I will show you in case you wanted to leave it on. So the LFO2 shown these settings uh, a few times before. So we have a triangle wave, there's a delay on the on the LFO so it doesn't start straight away, and then we have this eighth dotted pattern, so it's just giving that kind of classic uh, deep house groove, or I'm not sure what it, where it derives from, but uh, yeah, it's very iconic. Very nice. But yeah, take it off for now. Uh, we have some heavy key tracking on here. So as we're moving up and down the keyboard, it's going to open the cutoff filter and lower the cutoff filter. And that's about it for the envelopes and the, the general sound. The other thing that's going on is just a little bit of reverb here. Not too much. You could add a little bit more, actually. I think you could get away with this. As long as you're doing some mid-side EQ, which is what I'm doing here. So I'll, I'll go over this in a second. But you should, typically, people will tell you not to put reverb on your bass. And you shouldn't really maybe do it on a return channel and just take care of like the side frequencies, but it does add a nice bit of stereo warmth to your bass, but just try not to get too carried away with it. I usually would use like a very small amount of decay, make sure the dry is all the way over and it's a little bit of wet and you can even lower the size a little bit. So you're getting that kind of without it. I think it adds quite a bit. We'll just take away a little bit, a little bit less. There we go. 
just adds a nice bit of uh, stereo information there. And that is about it for the sound. I think one thing I did is I put it into poly uh, because I'm at some point in the bass, I am uh, adding multiple notes on top of each other. So if you have it in poly, it will play those notes at the same time as playing this bottom note here. Aha, yeah, it's, uh, that's why I didn't leave it on because it just clashes a bit too much. We'll put it back into mono so then it will play just one of the notes. I think it will sound a bit clearer. Yeah, that's much better. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the sustained bass. The processing, we have just a, a normal EQ, cutting out the real lows that you can't even hear, and then just a, a little bit of a low pass as well. Not doing too much with this EQ, and then just the bass mono for the utilities, just making sure that the, the reverb isn't taking these um, the sub frequencies and making them stereo. And then we have this side chain here, just to the kick, standard stuff and then a mid-side EQ. So mid-side EQ, I've shown it a few times before. All you do with the EQ8 is you just go to this MS mode. The yellow represents the side information, and then the, if you click this, this is the blue, which is like the normal EQ8. That represents the, the mid frequencies. So then with the side, I'm taking away the lows. Just It's basically doubling up on this, essentially, and getting rid of anything that's too rumbly and low in the sub information, and then boosting a little bit here, and then dipping here as well. So yeah, that's all that's going on with the sound. I hope that this was helpful and insightful. If you just want to grab the sounds off, uh, off the, yeah, the preset packs, I'll link them down below, or, and then you can just go grab them if you don't want to make them yourself. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Catch you in the next one.